Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen and I'm going to show you today how I made this motorboat out of gum paste. And if you see me using any tools or supplies you can use, check the link in the description below. It should be able to help you out. So here's a picture of the motorboat that I was sent that I'm going to replicate and I'm going to show you how I made it. You're going, if you just follow along, you're going to see that you can adapt it to, you know, whatever colors or styles you really need. This will give you a pretty good foundation, I think. So to begin the boat, I'm going to start with some white gum paste. Uh, I get asked all the time if you can use fondant in these decorations. Some of them you certainly could. Some of them you might have to add some CMC powder to in order to make it behave like gum paste before you could really use fondant. But I like to use gum paste. I just cut right through the middleman, get right to the gum paste. But anyway, okay. I'm taking my gum paste and I'm starting out by flattening it out on the one end, keeping it nice and long as you see. And I'm trying to work the one end into a point. So I'm pressing downwards toward the counter that I have it resting on and tapering it into the front to make a nice point on it. This is going to be the top of the boat. I'm What you're seeing right now will be the bottom of the boat. So I'm not worried about that big crack going down the center or anything. While I have it upside down, I keep working it longer and longer. You see how it's starting to get more boat shaped there? I'm trying to keep it nice and long, trying to keep the point going in the center there. And it also needs to lift up from behind the boat a little bit underneath and then head up and out toward the point in the front. Um, because the boats, you know, they don't just drop straight down in the water like like the bull the front of a bulldozer. It's it's tapered and angled and streamlined, I guess you'd might say, into the water. So I'm just going to keep on working that until I have a nice sharp edge going down the front of the boat into the water. And I have a nice point at the front and the top is nice and flat. I was going to have my boat sitting on top of the cake like it's in motion. That's why it's not level. The front is lifted up higher than the back. And I'm just going to keep working it and working it until I finally get it to where I'm happy with it. And once you're happy with the overall shape of your boat, it's just the overall shape right now, you're going to start doing the some of the major details. You're not going to hit the minor ones yet. The little fine things we're going to do much later. So the boat that I am working on had a little bit of a dip down below in, uh, in toward the back. So I'm using my ball tool to just kind of press down a little bit of a gully in it to just create that lower down area. I don't know what it was for but I'm not a boat person, so that's okay. It's just the way it looked, and you can see it kind of lost the shape, so I just cut it off and made it stick out and mush out a little bit, just trim it off. And now I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and cut out the actual center cabin, I guess, part of the boat. I am just cutting a nice little square out of it because, again, this is just how my boat was positioned and, and set up. You know, follow however yours is set up as well. And you're also going to pay attention, if you do decide to do this, to the location of your little cabin that you're going to carve out. Mine sits more toward the center, actually behind the halfway line, like kind of eh, maybe a little bit over the halfway line. So that's what I'm trying to do here, trying to make sure it sits back. I got a nice long nose to the front of my boat, and I keep that overall effect going strong. I'm using my knife to make kind of a sharper edge on either side of the de uh, little depressed area that I've got going there just to kind of clean it up a little bit, keep it nice and edgy. Again, trimming off any sloppy edges there that I had forming, which does happen and that's okay. Now I'm going to take that same edge and I'm going to kind of pinch off a little lip along the back of my boat. This speedboat that I was working with, it had like a little, um, kind of like a little landing area, you know, if you get in the water, you can climb up and there's a little flat standing area that you could get back into the boat with it. So that's what I was doing there, just making sure it stays nice and separated. See how I'm using my um, handle for my paintbrush there? And just using my fondant paddle to make it nice and flat. I just have that nice little edge, that nice little landing point there. Be careful not to wreck it if you do have one going on yours by pressing down too hard. And again, you know, keep, keep on reshaping the overall feel of the boat. Now I am just re-accentuating, trying to make it nice and sharp, because those of you noticed in that other scene where I turned it around, it was all crooked. Just trying to keep it nice and sharp. Looks a little crooked again. I will come back to it later, though. All right, I am carving at an angle along the front of my cabin area, because I'm going to have a little dashboard, I'm going to call it. Again, not a boat person, don't know my terms, so I apologize. 
and making sure everything stays nice and flat, nice and flat. that one edge stays nice and even, stop getting all ripply. I'm making sure my edges are again and my corners are nice and tight. I'm making sure I have a nice angle there because the dash, or again, that's what I'm calling it, is angled in the picture I was sent. Trying to flatten off the inside of my cabin a little bit because I just kind of, as you saw, cut and pulled and trimmed at will. But anyway, you're just going to keep working it down. I'm using a ball tool just to smooth it out. I do need it to be smoother because I'm going to add stuff into it. So make sure your edge is smooth too if you have to add seats or anything like that. Keep that in mind. I'm adding a kind of like a little rim now around the side of the boat on either side, making sure I have a nice point in the front and then going along the edge on the top and on the side to create a lip basically all around the side of the boat. Uh, I don't know why, I just noticed it in the picture, so it goes on the boat. And again, when you're working on this part of it, don't worry about the fine little details, but things like this, the main, you know, deep dents and ridges and whatever, they're the ones that are going to set you up further down the line, so you got to get those in place first. Once again, going back to touch up the back of the boat, and now I'm going to move on. I'm going to cut out kind of a long, thin piece. I rolled out a thin piece of gum paste, cut it out into a nice, long, pointy wedge, trim it off, get my size going properly, because this is going to become part of the hood, hood again, you know, not a boat person, <laughs> of my boat. So it's sitting on there. I've got it at a good size, I think. So now I'm going to add a little more detail to it. I'm using the same handle of my paintbrush to press down and kind of roll out like a little mini itty bitty rolling pin to flatten out and create another lip along the edges, trim off the any sloppy uneven part. And I also cut off at an angle the part that is the widest. So at the top of my upside down triangle here. So once you get it all nice and even, but you still have a nice little lip, then you're going to add it back to the boat and you're going to line it up right at the top uh, where the entrance to the cabin is, where it starts to slope down a little bit. At least that's how I am doing it here. If you have a different type of boat or different shape, you might want to build layers on the way I'm doing with this. And, you know, just shape it up so that the overall feel is there. I'm going to say most people can't get it 100% accurate and create like a living replica to the, you know, one one twentieth model size or something. But as long as you hit the keynotes, as long as you hit those one, those details that really stand out and that you notice, then you're going to be fine. People are not going to see any problem with that. Now I'm going to put the carpet inside the cabin of the boat. Mine is a nice bright red, so I've got some gum paste, red gum paste, rolled out very thin. And I'm just cutting it down to size to make it fit so that it will cover the bottom but not the walls on the inside. Now I've trimmed off all the extra so now it actually fits and then you add some water, press it down into place. And with this kind of thing you probably don't want to add water to any of your decorations that you're, you know, attaching until you're really sure it fits and it's proper and ready to go. So you don't want to get locked into something that you're not quite 100% on. Now I added a white piece of gum paste, just a square there for that back section just to make it nice and clean looking, nice and flat and clean goes up to that one edge. I'm just readjusting my lines there and I am making sure that my lines, my edges, again, nice and sharp, that they look nice and straight, ready to go. Now I'm cutting that back side again with my blade at an angle because it's going to be like a bench seat in the back. So I need it to be slightly tipped back so it's a comfortable seat. It's not a straight up and down seat. You're not sitting in school right now. You're relaxing on the boat. I took a white piece of gum paste, and I let, rolled it up kind of long, and I'm flattening it with my paddle, and then I'm going to cut a big chunk of it off and use that piece to create the bench, the bottom bench part of my seat. So once it's a good size, look, looks not too fat, not too skinny or anything, I'm going to stick it in place. I had to do a little bit of adjusting, as you can see. When it's ready, add some water, and then stick it into place. Now I'm going to just make sure it's nice and snug, nice and straight all those happy things, and then I'm going to move on to the back part of my bench. I'm taking some more white gum paste, just like before. I'm rolling it out thin, but a little thicker than the other pieces I've rolled out real thin so far. I have it kind of curved, as you see, and I cut a straight edge across the bottom, two straight edges on the sides. 
I'm flattening my top part a little bit to make it more even so that way I have a gently curved on the side and then straight across back to my boat. I need to have it a little bit longer and a little bit curved because again this style that I'm making the back cushion part kind of folds over the back of the boat maybe like more kind of like a headrest you know type of effect but that's what I'm doing so make sure the edges are all nice and in place it's nice and smooth and then I'm gonna keep on moving all right now I'm rolling out this piece of white gum paste kind of into an oval long oval tic tac shape whatever you want to call it but it's nice and flat and that's going to become the center part of my console so I have the top part left domed I just trimmed off the bottom you know adjust it till it's the right size and then I'm going to add a little bit of water and then stick it into place now for my boat I have another console that's or a little panel kind of looking thing on either side so I'm just going to do the same thing I'm going to take some more of the gum paste flatten it out cut out what I need and then put them on either side okay so now we got the cabin kind of filled out here and we're just going to keep on chipping away. Now I'm going to make the seats for the boat. I'm cutting out two thicker circles, as you can see. Those are going to become the, the uh, I guess, pilot seat and the seat next to it. I'm just cutting a little nip off of each one so it's almost, you know, a full circle, but not quite. And then I'm going to take the circles again. I'm going to cut it in half, just one this time. And then I'm going to cut a crescent, like a hardcore crescent shape out of it, you see? So I'm using my circle cutter to take almost all of it away. And this is going to now sit on top of each of those circles and become the backs of the seats. So now I've got the cushions of the seats as well as the back of the seats and they all fit. And I'm going to, as you can see, very carefully move everything around until they both face the proper direction. And then put the backs in place, add a little bit of water to everything, locking it all in. Okay, now I'm going to take my red food coloring marker and I'm very carefully writing in the name of the boat. It was in one of the pictures that I was sent where I could see inside the cabin a little bit. And so that's what I did there. Just making it a little more authentic, a little more fun. Now I'm going to do the console behind the uh, geez, steering wheel. Sorry if it's wrong again. I just took a piece of black gum paste, rolled it flat so it's kind of shaped like an oval. I poke some little holes through it so that the white, when I put it on top, will show through. And once I have it to a good size, the first one I made was too tiny. That was that other one sitting there not doing anything. But the other one fit pretty good, so there it is. Now I'm cutting out a little rectangle, and I'm going to put it on the other side, because the other side looked like it was kind of like a, almost like a glove box or a little storage compartment. It was black on the top and had little brown, or excuse me, gray section on the bottom, so... I made a couple little rectangles, stuck them in there, calling it good. Still getting the overall effect, like I said before. We're not going to get 100% accuracy here, but I can definitely get the overall effect going, and so can you. Okay, moving on again. There's my circle that I cut out with a hollowed center there. That's going to be my steering wheel. There was some kind of a speaker or something on the side, so I put a little circle of black on that side, by the again, by the um, pilot side. I'm going to take some red now, and I'm going to start adding the decorations to the boat. In the picture, the original picture you saw, it had like splashes of color, like red and yellow and maroon kind of color. So that's what I'm starting to do here. I've got a couple little zigzags here going with the red. I cut out a piece of yellow, put it over the boat the way it was supposed to lay as best I could. You know, it's again, not perfect, but I tried. I really did try. And then I'm going to do the same thing there with the dark maroon color. Lay it across the back of the boat there. Trim it off where I think it should stop, where it should begin. And then I'm going to keep on moving. So you can see I added another little red splash to the back of the boat there. And now I'm taking one long, thin, skinny little piece of red. And I'm going to wrap it around the back, the headrest part of my um, back seat. It, again, just how it looked, what it looked like. So I'm trying to replicate it. When you're doing your own boat, you're going to want to make sure, again, the major colors, the major things that stand out to you are the ones you're going to try to include. The little finer things you might miss, and that'll be okay. It will be okay. As long as the overall feel is there, it's going to be really good. So I'm just adding a little bit of water, again, because you want to make sure everything fits and is in place and will be in place before you lock it in, lock it down with water. And now that it is done, I'm going to move on to the stripes for the side of the boat now. 
So these are going to be a little bit longer, a little bit thicker, and I'm putting some water first on the side of the boat. And this is like after I just got done saying, oh, you know, make sure it's all in place before you lock it down. Yeah, this is kind of the exception. This one is long and twisty and it's going to move around on you because it is on the side of the boat. As soon as you start moving it, it's going to end up losing its position on you. So this one is the exception to the rule, although there's no real rules. So I'm starting at the front and I'm working all the way back and it, then it folds and goes underneath that little lip. Remember the lip at the beginning, the little um, standing board area? And that's what I'm doing. I'm making it go down and then slant downward and then wrap and tuck underneath there. And then I just trim off the extras. So now I got my red racing stripe down each side. Looking pretty sharp if I do say so myself. And already it's it looks really good. And you're like, once you start adding little colors and the little details that we had to have our base done first to build on, it really looks sharp. Now again, I'm just cutting some more shapes that are going to go onto the side of the boat. Looking at the picture, if you care to go back and look at the original one, you're going to see kind of like the big swirl of red with the little splashes and other colors coming out of it and going behind, back toward the back of the boat. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just freehanding all of this. I'm using my red gum paste rolled really, really thin, using my X-Acto knife, putting it in place with some water as best I can, and yeah, just keep going with it. Just adding all the splashes and the lines and everything that I think look appropriate. So once I'm getting all of those into place, I'm going to switch over to some of the maroon colors now, the dark maroon. Same as before, I'm just doing the best I can, lining up the stripes and everything that I think should be there. And you could kind of see it there for a second. You had to be quick. You had to be quick to see. I'm following the swish and everything else. And I'm just going to do the same thing on both sides. Now I am kind of moving along here, but I try to do one color at a time just because that color is already out and rolled thin and ready to go. So now I'm moving on to the yellow. Same as before, I just look at the picture, try to line up with the major swishes and the swirls and the slashes and the colors, just putting them on the side of the boat as best I can. And what I'm gonna do to one side, I'm going to try very hard to do as evenly on the other side. So there you go, I've got my swish. You can see it pretty good there with my colors going down. And now I'm gonna take my red food coloring marker and I'm going to add some more of the little splashes and splotches that were on the boat. And again, just doing the best I can, trying to keep it even, doing it on one side, do make sure I do it on the other side, and then gonna move on again. Now, my boat originally had the word Baja, I believe, written on the side, so I wrote it oh so carefully as best I could to make it look like it did in the picture on the side with my food coloring marker, and I did not write it on the other side. I don't know how you would. You'd have to be writing it backwards or something, so I just didn't. Now I'm going to add a few more final touches here. There's a few more yellow stripes. The one goes right under the red in the front there of the bow. Again, if your boat has these kinds of things, then you're going to add them. If you're going to need like a roof or something, you could always, you know, add that on. But this is where I'm at. So I've got my stripes going pretty nice here. It's very colorful. I think we're pretty good with that. Now I'm going to do a couple like little final details here. I'm going to add the little ladder to the back of the boat. So I just took some gray, cut out basically a squared off horseshoe that fits perfectly on my little ledge there. And now I'm going to add the windshield. I've got some light blue gum paste that I rolled out nice and long. I'm using my circle cutter to cut off two rounded off edges of it to try to keep it as even as I can because something that long, you know, I'm not, I'm not always the best at freehanding everything. So I was a little tall because mine is very sporty and very racy. It has to have a small slanted windshield. So I've got it nice and thin. I'm happy with the size of it. And I'm going to put it in place on my boat, but I'm going to place it so that it's angling as much as I can back toward, or like over top of the cab without it falling <laughs> or falling off my boat. I tuck the corners into place just like so. And now I'm going to add a little bit of white to outline the top and the window panes themselves. So I've got my piece of white that I rolled out nice and thin, nice and long. I just laid it very carefully over the top, just trimming off the extras, but I wanted to go down the sides into a slight slant there, as you can see. I had to add a little bit of extra water because it wasn't quite stuck in place properly. And now I'm adding four really skinny, teeny, tiny little pieces of white gum paste 
to go straight up the windshield to, again, section off the little window panes, I guess they are, themselves. So I've got one on either side in the corners, and then the two in the front in the center there. Now I am going back one more time for a little bit more of a touch up with my food coloring marker for little details that I felt like maybe should be, you know, accented more. And uh, adding one little piece of gray gum paste here, a little skinny rectangle right on the nose of the boat that's going to become a cleat, I guess it is. It's what it looked like in the picture. So as long as it sticks, <laughs> then it's good to go. And now for one more time, I'm going to bust out my black food coloring marker and add a couple more little details, a little bit of color to the steering wheel, a couple little, you know, little marks and handles inside of the boat itself. And then I have got a nice little race boat ready to go. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe because it really does help me out. I've got a lot of other videos out there, so be sure to take a look. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.